Okay. Hello, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Fit for Change My Nudge, My Nudge Monday Vibe In. My name is Chris Thorne, and I'm joined here with Fee Hills. We're from My Nudger AI. Super excited for the topic we have today for you. This is all about the art of corkscrew thinking, unleashing your genius. And you'll recognize probably the picture of Winston Churchill. He features quite prominently in our slides today. Amazing story, and no, and, and it. And we now need this type of thinking more than ever, really, with some of the, the challenges and the issues that we're facing in today's world. And before we dive in, Fee, just give us a quick, just give us a quick reminder. How do these vibes that we're doing every week, how does that fit into the landscape of the mind nudger AI and everything that we've been talking about over the last month or so? Uh, yeah, so thanks, Chris. Hi, everybody. And we're not on camera today because I'm traveling, but we will be next week. So uh, excuse the sort of darkness in the background of just slides, but emotional vibes is really focused, like I said last week, on how we feel. So they're very easy to do in this live environment, uh, you know, the sort of LinkedIn lives, whereas my nudges are really focused on construct, you know, cognitive restructuring. They're really about the type of sort of developing the mindset thought by thought. So that's more of a process, very hard to do in these lives. And then we've got pop up learning, which is social learning, which really needs to all of us to be in a room. So we 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 can bring this value to you every Monday on the in the emotional vibes, which really focus on how we think through how we feel. So on that note, let's move on. Now, um, as Chris said, we, we're focused on corkscrew thinking today which is very much the sort of uh gift of winston churchill during the war i'm just going to tell you that story in a second but i want to give you a bit of context because human beings and you can see the beings is written in yellow in order to, to talk about corkscrew thinking or that type of innovative outside the box thinking we need to put context with it like everything else. And that is considerations in learning and adaptation. And the considerations are, for me, these four things, that they're not obviously all unique to us, meaning consciousness and things, but conscious, human beings are conscious. We also mostly walk around unconscious, in our unconscious mind and behaving out of our unconscious mind. We're creative beings. And we're also social beings. So on that note, that's just for a background in context. Now, today, uh, when it comes to corkscrew thinking, although this is not in McGilchrist's work, he very much talks and has been working 30 long years and no doubt arduous years and researching the differences in the hemisphere between left and right brain. And um, obviously, I really recommend that you go and look at his work in depth because it's so incredibly critical and value of where we are now in the world. So it's really today is about how can we use something with corkscrew thinking to, to harness the power of the work that Ian Gil, uh, McGilchrist has done. Now, he had a book out originally. The first book is The Master uh, and His Emissary. And I really recommend you read that book. Uh, there is later books, but definitely recommend you read that. Now, what he talks about, to give you a more context, is that the world at the moment is stuck in the left brain. And that's, by the way, not a good thing. This brain is really, the left brain is much more explicit than the right brain so if you think about knowledge and learning and where we are in creativity the left brain is very narrow so our attention to it is a very tight window which of it doesn't lend itself to thinking outside the box if you want to put it that simplistically and if, and the right brain on the other hand is more about tacit implicit knowledge implicit thought so if you want to talk about wisdom and so forth, you're really looking at the right brain. The trouble is we are almost fully stuck in the left brain. And this is why we're seeing a lot of the problems that we're seeing in the world today. 
I mean, this is not my work. This is his work. So uh, he sort of, his point is that attention matters. And a lot of the work that he's done in this 30 years is really boils down to where we attend to. And if we give all the power and attention to the left brain and behave out of that and think out of that, then what we end up with is a sort of uh, it's shaping our world almost like a control freak, a roll out mentality. I pick keywords. It's simple minded. It's that sort of grabbing effect. Now, it's not to say that left brain is not important. The right brain is important. They're both important, but they're both very, very different, but not in the way we originally thought with the old myths of the left and right brain. So that's why I recommend you really go and listen to all his work. The right brain really hit, should be the master. And it's the right brain. Forget whether it's more creative and so forth. It's a more complex system. It's holistic. It's seeing the bigger picture. It's think of it as flow. OK, it's also where the wisdom is and it can deal with sort of unpredictability, which is where we are now. So what we need to do, and this is where corkscrew thinking comes in, in a practical sense, we need to shift more to the right. OK, and, and Fee, this is a real paradigm shift, isn't it? Because I think in the past we've tended to think of, oh, the left brain is all about logic and then the right brain is all a bit sort of out there but you know that's where the artistic and that sort of creative piece comes in and you know we were speaking here before earlier you were saying you know that that left brain it's almost thought to be it's almost primal isn't it? it's almost linear sequential and 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 you use the analogy that you know the left brain is like being in the rapids but the right brain is what's going to help me navigate those rapids so i think this is quite an important paradigm shift for our audience isn't it yes so this is where we look at, I mean, obviously, you know, thinking isn't the only game in town, obviously not. But it is a technique that we can use to move and shift into the right brain more. So, yes, we desperately need to move into the right brain thinking um, as as a as human beings. So this is not an isolated problem. It's not even an organizational problem. It's a worldview problem. Mm. and a cultural problem so on that note i think you're going to share the story which really for me the story of winston the story of corkscrew thinking and where it comes from uh, it's not a long story you, you sort of para you you're giving it in a couple of paragraphs but by understanding that you really understand what corkscrew is and why we need it what corkscrew thinking is and why we need it so tell us a little bit of that story well, yeah, I mean, so just to set the scene, and I mean, I was so excited when we decided to do this five, but it is such a great story. There's a, there's a, there's so much out there about it. Um, there's even, I was telling you, there's even a film out there on Amazon right now about um, one of the operations. I'm going to tell you about just sex. To, just to set the scene, look, in 1943, the wars, the World War II, the outlook was pretty bleak. And the Germans really had the upper hand. And Winston Churchill realized that Brute force alone was just not going to cut the mustard if they wanted to defeat Hitler. And so he shifted focus towards a more cunning strategy. And he termed this corkscrew thinking. And it was a method to just outmaneuver the enemy through innovative and unpredictable tactics. And this approach led to the establishment of a secret brain trust at Bletchley Park. Um, and that's where Alan Turing and other brilliant minds cracked the famous Enigma code and they transformed a modest country manor into what we really could consider the world's first innovation center. Now, over 10,000 people worked at Bletchley Park. And by 1945, the need for that innovative, innovative thinking really became evident, especially because desperate times were there and, you know, such as the precarious invasion of Sicily. And in one of their boldest moves ever, British intelligence officers devised Operation Mincemeat, which was a plan to mislead the Axis forces. And they disguised a dead tramp, Glinder Michael, as Royal Marine Captain William Martin. And they planted false documents on his corpse to suggest that an Allied attack was happening on Greece and Sardinia. Now, the ruse succeeded because the Germans redirected their forces and this allowed for a very successful and much less costly allied invasion of Sicily. So Churchill's corkscrew thinkers proved that the power of fearless innovation 
a, pr a principle that's crucial amid today's rapidly changing world is always going to win the day. Now, before we dive into the vibe, let's just take a quick look at, well, what are some of the attributes of people that are corkscrew thinkers? So firstly, they're, they have courage to dare. They're fearless. They go out of their comfort zones. They challenge the status quo. They're innovative, but yet they work together to collaborate and push the traditional boundaries relentlessly. Continuous learning, I think that's been a bit of a theme of our Fit to Change broadcast, isn't it? About you know adaptability, the, you know, the ability to be a chameleon and adjust to new challenges with that cognitive flexibility. We need to be able to ride the wave by facilitating that critical thinking but in ourselves and others. We gain that creative and phenomenal advantage. And of course, mental well-being, because if we don't have a mind that's free from worry, fear, and doubt, we're certainly not going to be able to access our best thinking. And we need this to foster self-empowerment and confidence. Of course, a deep curiosity. You know, we're tirelessly asking powerful questions, igniting those chains of thought that lead to the innovative solutions. And of course, as you've seen before, you know, asking the right questions is what sparks that curiosity and that creativity. It drives those thought processes and our outcomes. But we need to be careful about the type of questions we ask, don't we, Fee? Because some questions can be quite weak or destructive. You know, why does everything always go wrong for me? And Fee, do you want to just tell us why that's so important? Uh, really, I, li I like this question because... This is the opposite to a corkscrew thinking. Remember, yeah. with corkscrew thinking, you're drilling down. So they may start off as quite, quite not that deep and then gradually get deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's the point of corkscrew thinking. Mm. So, but think of this question on its surface level. What does, every, why does everything go wrong for me? We seem to be very good at driving emotions through negative questions rather than driving emotions through uh, constructive or positive questions so why does everything always go wrong for me it's a generalization that things go wrong not helpful uh they always go wrong generalization stereotyping it's like wow come on it's a complete generalization and it's completely not true and therefore not helpful because not everything goes wrong all the time so just hold that thought about that question when we get to the vibe okay so I just want to break down a little bit about, before we go the vibe, the corkscrew questions um, from a category po point of view. So they're sparking curiosity. Therefore, they need emotions. They need to fire up the emotions, the motivation, as well as the sort of thinking. So it, it is a combination of these things. Challenging assumption, breaking away from conventional thinking. Nothing's massively surprising about creative thinking here. Stimulating creativity, obviously. Driving a focused action. Mm. And action is so important because nothing happens without action. No, that's true. So the motivation. Encouraging reflection. Um, not just self-examination, but reflection on even the question we're asking. So this is the corkscrew. We're going, imagine you're turning that corkscrew. Bit of a mixed metaphors today, but that's okay. So uh, if you imagine court screwing, the first question may not be that deep, but as you go down, we could start to be way more profound and deeper and get more value from the outcome and also insights, ideas, solutions. In other words, problem solving, right? Finding the solutions. So facilitating growth, so they aid personal and professional development. So the mere thought of going through this process and keep going deeper and deeper, you become better at it for a start the more you do it, like anything. Mm. But it is that inquiry that we need to be engaged in all the time. And this is why they say in the AI world, questions are important, but only if they're meaningful and only if what they're driving for is a very useful, when I say useful, I don't mean necessarily just utility, I mean useful answer. So if they take us to a better place, right? So in in the other thing before we go into this vibe is the labeling of court screw questions. Now, what we've discovered is 
having a question. So let's take, I've, to, I've got a specific question here. If, 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 oh dear, excuse me, just seeing a mistake there. So let's go to number two, 24 hour rescue. We've labeled the question with unlimited resources, but only a day to tackle our company's toughest challenge. What's our game plan? It's a very surface base. It's not a deep question, but it gets us started. So what we've done by labeling this question is we start to anchor in the thought. So you want to anchor in these questions so that they can be you know, deeply embedded over time into our culture. Why is this important? Because basically we need the speed of change. We need to be asking lots and lots of questions at scale within an organization. So to label it, we turn it into a mind game. So every question becomes a mind game. And then we can start playing with that mind game. We can start doing the corkscrew thing, going deeper. So it might start off for forced to choose between profits and planet. Where do we stand and why? Uh, you know, whether we'd ask this in a question, I don't know, in, in an organization. But it's a question that starts us off. It's an ethics based question, of course. Right. So where can it lead us? Well, we keep going deeper and deeper. So you see the point. So let's get to our corkscrew if you like, vibe, which today we're giving you a technique called swipe right. Uh, a term used in various different ways in life, and in, in, it's certainly in the technological world. But what I want you to do is to close your eyes, if you can, not if you're driving, same old thing. Choose a current problem in your head, be it professional, not professional, um, you know, it can be personal, it can be an obstacle challenge at all, or merely something you're trying to maybe even innovate. Just think of it. Can I just ask you to put yourself on mute, Chris? Sorry. <clears throat> just a second. Okay, so I want you to picture this in your mind's eye and just imagine that you're navigating the rapids. So you're in, in a fast flowing river, the rapids, there's boulders everywhere. I just want you to imagine that. And in your mind's eye, you envision, envision the sort of boulders rapidly approaching and they're fast and they're furious. Okay, so that in, that, with that in mind, let's start. So as you go about your week, you're going to be practicing to swipe right in your mind. So focus on the current, focus on your current problem or challenge. And as you focus on it, pay attention to your inner dialogue, that inner chatter. And take note of the emotion or the emotions that your inner talk is stirring in you. So just focus on that a second and note that or make a mental note of that. Now, if your thoughts feel negative or maybe just off, they don't feel right. Just visualize your brain swiping right. And when you do swipe right, you see a mass of color and you see this amazing, holistic, intelligent, wise brain and you want to immerse yourself in it. If you can't see it in your mind's eye, don't worry, just keep swiping right. Trust the process. And in your mind's eye, you find yourself rushing through the rapids. But you are in a boat and you're skillfully dodging the boulders. And the great news here is that you feel amazing and you feel energized. You're swirling round. You're swirling round in an energized way. And you're, you feel like you're sort of in the flow and you're going through this incredibly fast but incredibly exciting rapids. And you're not at all 
afraid of the boulders that are coming up because you're just swirling around them in the flow. Do you know what? It actually does feel fun. So when you're ready and when you're seeing this in your mind's eye, you ask yourself a corkscrew question about your problem or challenge. Now, because you haven't yet seen loads of examples of corkscrew questions and we haven't yet worked on that, I'm going to give you the question to ask yourself. And remember we said of that poor question was, why does everything always go wrong for me? We're going to ask a very surface based but very important question. And that is, why does everything, what if, sorry, my bad, what if everything always went right for me? So look at your problem and just ask yourself that question as you swipe right to that mass of colour. What if everything always went right for me? And remember, if you feel stuck with that in any way, just keep swiping right. Okay. So as you go about your week, practice this. Stick to the same problem. You can come off mute now. Sorry, Chris. Um, That's okay. I was I was just taking this in, and um, I was aware also that um, you know we are starting you off with. You might consider them slightly easier corkscrew questions and that's because it takes a while to kind of warm up and get used to the idea and we've actually got a really fantastic download um, a cheat sheet for you with 39 corkscrew questions that you can go you can uh, take away and practice as well but even just as you were taking us through that narrative fee I, would, I just actually imagined myself on that river you know skillfully kayaking you know around those boulders just like you see the people do in the olympics and, and just navigating that and and that that swipe right that's such a great technique because isn't it a bit it's it's really starting to recognize that you have power over those thoughts and that you can choose to just let them go and just set them to one side and then focus on something else I think that's a really powerful technique to be honest it's a tool isn't it so if when we're doing these sort of mind games we're giving ourselves something we can put in the backpack of our mind and we can pull it out when we need it in that moment. So if mm. we want to write right, the thing is, I'm not very good at visualising, oddly enough. I think I'm more auditory. I struggle and, with this as well, whereas I can find yeah. it quite easy to put myself in a feeling or an association with something. And I think probably a lot of other people do too. And, and sometimes if you can just even focus on that resourceful state or feeling that you want to have, that can then help you to start to visualize and then generate those questions as well. Exactly. I'm just going to share something here. Hold on. Just do, 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 do. let me do it. Uh, window. Let's have a look. Yes, this is the one. I think I can do it. Can you see my screen? It's there. It is. Everyone, see my screen. What do you see? I see the starter queue with the 39 questions. Okay, so here's, we've made a little handout for you, a little cheat sheet, call it what you want. And this is specifically written for HR and learning folk. Because again, with court screw questions, we just use complete generalized one there to, as a surface based question before it goes, the old court screw gets going, which was supposing everything always went right for me. It's a very helpful question to start off with, but it's very general. Mm. If we're talking about something like we're in a meeting and we've got some business or organizational challenges, which a lot of us have, and specifically to HR and learning in this case, because that's the audience. Now we've got 39 questions to start off with. There are probably a billion. So you'll forgive us if we haven't got an exhaustive list. So what you note here is that we've got more specific questions. Again, they are surface based. We might do a handout where we actually do a sort of infographic where we actually do corkscrew down and go deeper and deeper and show you that process. 
But for now, virtual Vanguard, we've given it a name. How can virtual reality training sessions improve? We start to ask these questions. We specifically called this corkscrew questions for HR and learning teams in the AI workplace. So it's asking questions about how we can use ethically and apply AI to different factors of HR and learning. So they're them. And what you notice, every single one turns into a mind game that we can start to drill down from. It's only a question. But you know, it's questions that get us to start changing our thinking. They are the thing that help us navigate. And, and if the question is right, it will put us over to the right-hand side of our mind, of our brain, sorry, which is what we need. And as I said, I really recommend to put this whole thing into context anyway, that you read everything and listen to everything to do with Ian uh, McGilchrist, if you haven't already. So how are we doing for time, Chris? Well, we've got about four minutes, according to my reckoning. And, and I think, listen, I think it's such an important point that we make about these questions, V, is that they don't, they're not just to open up curiosity. They need to motivate us. They need to open up, they need to kind of get us at an emotional level. And I, I noticed that, you know, just as you read out the questions for the mind, uh, for the vibe today, it's like, you know, just the difference in contrasting how you feel when you ask that destructive question versus how you feel when you ask this other question about, well, what if everything always, it's like, it's, I mean, I felt like a weight lifted off my shoulders really. And you just couldn't, you, you know, it was just a very different feeling and sensation and, and really motivated you to then go, yeah, well, what if, you know, and it just opens up a lot more possibility. And I think possibility and hope is something that we really need right now because we have so many challenges and sometimes they feel insurmountable. And that's why, you know, having inspiring examples and stories of people like Churchill and his band of corkscrew thinkers is so important that it reminds us that we really can tap into some incredible and creative thinking when, you know, really when our backs are up against it. Actually, that you, that you've heard the saying, necessity is the mother of invention. It's it's when we're forced into a position where we really have to think creatively. Actually, that's when the best ideas emerge, isn't it? Yes. I mean, we're not really, I mean, creating, we're finding, aren't we? We're discovering. Mm. So this whole thing about questions and asking questions and is garbage in, garbage out. So the, the question matters. And that's why corkscrew thinking is good because you can start off quite surface level and then go deeper rather than just have this amazing question that fixes all, which probably doesn't exist, right? So if we looked at here and thinking about this week and going about this vibe, because you've got to practice these things, anything like mind nudging thing is about going through the process, right? But when you do go through the process, it doesn't take long to go in. And the sort of great news is, it has a massive compound effect. That's the good news. So if we swipe right this week, spend the wit uh, picking a problem, swiping right, and if you find yourself with this type of thing, what if everything, uh, you know, what if why is everything always going wrong? This sort of weak uh, question that only thing it's going to elicit really, to be truthful, is it is an excuse. Very, very, very rarely is it going to come up with a reason because it's not it's it's not a fact is it so mm -hmm. what if everything always went right for me we can then start to drill down even for that very generic question which is very unspecific and we can say how can i make this happen what have i got to do to make it happen and we can start drilling down and and helping our brain come up with the answer because the brain you know it it, it wants to work it's a workhorse but if you're working always on the left-hand side, you just simply are never going to come up with the answers that are anything other than conventional thinking. Mm. In other words, old knowledge. And we really, if you if you if you want to start, you know, obviously start improving our world and our organisations, we've got to start creating new knowledge, and that necessitates that we swipe right. So on that note, to close off, I want to say thanks, Chris, and thanks everybody who listens to recording or live or whatever this session and finds it useful. Please do use it. It is learn a sense of meaning. It's for you to do that work and practice it. And what I would say is next week, we've got a sort of vibe that's going to be a combination of what we'll call resilience and creativity. 
to uh, actually constraints in creativity and resilience. So that's mm. coming next week. We always leave it as a surprise to what it is. Mm. Next month, 9.30, be there or be square. Now, if you go to, um, if you also go to the website, mynudger.ai, so that's mynudger.ai, <clears throat> And you go to just about us underneath there, you see the drop down or there's a link in this session below in the, the, you know, in the comment section, you can see it there and we put a link and you can go and get these 39 questions. So ah, we, or in Theo, I see we've got a comment from Krishna. It says a small amount of tweaking in the process of questioning will definitely make a difference. Yeah, brilliant. But that, that, that's what we're talking about, Krishna. Well done. That's exactly it. So the, the, the corkscrew, if you imagine a corkscrew just going a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, it can be a lot or it can be a little bit. It doesn't matter. The point is to keep digging. Yeah, so the small amount of tweaking in the process of questioning. Brilliant. You can keep, yeah, you're right. You can keep also tweaking the question till you get it how you want. And then label it. Because once you've got a great question, you want to spread the spread the love around the organization so on that note we've gone past the time but we always do so what can i say so i want to say thank you very much everybody for uh, either listening live or listening on the recording and uh, and we will see you next week and thank you chris and thank you krishna yeah thanks everybody we'll look forward to seeing you next week thank you